Welcome to Hand Surgery Resources YouTube video. Who was Wartenberg? What was Wartenberg syndrome? And what is Wartenberg's sign? Robert Wartenberg is a physician who was born in 1887 in what is now Belarus. He studied medicine in Germany. He became a professor of neurology at the university in Germany in 1933 and fled Nazi Germany in 1935. Later, he became professor of neurology at the University of California in the United States. He published widely, 150 papers and four textbooks. The Wartenberg syndrome and Wartenberg sign were named after him. He was termed the Sherlock Holmes of clinical neurology because of his excellent clinical skills and diagnostic acumen. One of his textbooks was titled Diagnostic Tests in Neurology. He also invented the pinwheel sensory testing tool as seen here. The Wartenberg syndrome is an entrapment of the superficial dorsal sensory branch of the radial nerve. The incidence of this problem is extremely rare. 0.003% is the annual incidence. This problem is caused by compression of the radial sensory nerve by the edge of the brachioradialis and the extensor carpi radialis longus. Typically, there is a history of closed trauma to this area of the nerve before symptoms begin. Patients complain of tingling and paresthesias and pain in the dorsal radial aspect of the wrist, hand, and upper forearm. They avoid wearing tight wristbands and watches, etc. The signs include a tunnel sign, as shown here, right over the radial sensory nerve as it exits from underneath the brachial radialis. Tapping on the nerve at this point causes paresthesias in the distribution of the nerve. The diagnosis can at times be confirmed by nerve conduction velocity studies. This video shows a detailed example of the examination for Wartenberg syndrome. The Wartenberg sign is a way of uh, irritating the radial nerve to see if it produces paresthesias in the distribution of the radial nerve that are similar to the patient's uh, complaint. Uh, if you feel the radial styloid, the radial nerve is gonna be running here, underneath the brachioradialis, and then out under its edge and up onto the top of the thumb and hand. To see if the radial nerve is hypersensitive, like it is in Wartenberg syndrome, one simply does a percussion on the distribution of the nerve to see if it produces paresthesias in the radial nerve distribution that are similar to those that the patient is complaining about. One has to be careful that this percussion produces paresthesias from the irritated nerve and you're not stimulating a tender first dorsal compartment from tendonitis. Treatment options include non-operative therapeutics such as rest and bracing as long as the brace does not put pressure on the superficial radial nerve. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be helpful. Activity modification, such as avoiding tight wristbands and watches, can also decrease the symptoms. Cortisone injections in the area have been used with some report of helping decrease the symptoms. Surgical intervention in the form of a surgical decompression and neurolysis is rarely indicated and should only be performed when the conservative measures have failed to relieve the patient's symptoms. Surgery is typically 70 to 75 percent successful at alleviating the symptoms. One should always be aware of how superficial the dorsal radial sensory nerve is located in this area, as seen here in the image. Wartenberg's sign can be seen in ulnar nerve palsy, in severe cubital tunnel syndrome, and after ulnar nerve laceration and repair. Typically, the problem after repair is that the nerve regenerates, but the innervation of the third volar interosseous is incomplete. This results in the third volar interosseous being weak, and the hypothenar function and contracture pull the finger into an abducted position, which is further aggravated by the unopposed pull of the extensors, particularly the extensor digitimi minimi. The patients complain in this particular situation with difficulty caused by the abducted finger, such as 
having a hard time getting their hand into their pocket as shown here in the brief video. This video shows a positive Wartenberg sign which is demonstrated in a patient who has chronic right cubital tunnel syndrome. The right hand has the abnormality as you see in the video and the left functions normally. Correcting the deformity associated with the Wartenberg sign is directed at correcting the underlying pathology. Sometimes bracing such as buddy taping can help, but more often tendon transfers using the extensor digiti minimi or the extensor indices proprius are used to correct the imbalance created by the weak third volar interosseous muscle and the contracted hypothenar muscles and the overpull of the extensor digiti minimi. To summarize the key points, Wartenberg himself added knowledge and tools to our armamentarium. He was an astute diagnostician. Wartenberg syndrome is very rare. Distinguishing Wartenberg syndrome from De Quervain's tenosynovitis is an important clinical distinction, particularly because De Quervain tenosynovitis is common and relatively easy to treat by comparison. Spontaneous resolution of Wartenberg syndrome is common. Neurolysis of the superficial radial nerve is rarely needed. Wartenberg's sign indicates a third palmar or volar interosseous dysfunction, often seen after a on the nerve laceration of the wrist where nerve regeneration to this muscle was incomplete. The deformity causing the positive Wartenberg sign can be treated with tendon transfer. Thank you for watching our YouTube video on Wartenberg, Wartenberg syndrome and Wartenberg sign. For more information, see www.handsurgeryprimer.org and later this year, see Hand Surgery Source at handsurgeryresource.com. Thank you for your attention.